Good evening, and welcome to another old and somewhat improved version of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your disjointed and disgruntled host, Voice of Doom. Hello, I'm back, and I'm back in a big way, and I'll tell you why, coffee in a glass. I have a new setup. I did a few diatribes on my kid's computer, and the uh, volume wasn't to my liking, so I'm going to erase all that. And hopefully this will be the first of many more screeds, rants, and tirades. And this is a Chromebook, which is not quite as sophisticated as a PC, but much more sophisticated than a Kindle. And I will say that I should use this, but it doesn't work. But it's a prop. You see, there's the plug-in. But, I like holding it because I feel like I'm on TV. Now, I will give you a very succinct reason to not get an abortion. Because when I got home from work yesterday, my kid asked me if I would let him have my fish and chips that I brought from the uh, casino. And instead of saying, no, I was saving it for me, I said, yeah, you can have it. Because I like to give things to people, especially if it's not that big a deal. And he said, oh, good, because I'll trade you for this new Chromebook I just bought you. New, right out of the box. And he bought it for me because he knows I enjoy doing these diatribes. And he knows it's therapeutic and he knows it's good for my, my ego, my self-esteem. It is really good, by the way. I will tell you right now that if you ever feel bad about yourself or you feel like you're uncomfortable with who you are, then do a few videos on your computer and then watch them. And you'll probably see things in yourself that you never saw before. So that's why I say don't get an abortion because you never know when your kid is going to buy you a computer. And he's also going to go and buy me a mic setup so that the sound quality is better. Because even though uh, the sound quality is better than the Kindle, it's almost too good. And there's hissing in there. It's annoying. And I added a little bumper music because I always wanted to have bumper music. And I'm going to use a lot of Gang of Four in my bumper music because I love Gang of Four. Not the Chinese gang in charge of the Cultural Revolution, but the band from the 80s, 90s, whatever. Um, but let's get on with the subjects of the day. Now, I want to add a coda to my last rather crappy diatribe about pronouns, and I wanted to add things that I saw on this Odin's Men uh, uh, podcast, which I told you about last time. And it's pretty addictive, so I gotta thank him for getting me onto one more thing that I'm addicted to. It's addicting to watch these idiots on TikTok. They're absolutely bizarre. And just when you think you've reached bottom, you realize you're not even close. As far as what people will do and what people will say. There's two things that really bug me. I'm going to add to my other um, complaints. One is that a lot of these TikTokers are teachers and they're Gen Xers. No, they're millennials. And they insist on talking to their students about their sex life. And they want them to know about everything. Especially when they're not in the mainstream of sexuality. They just can't wait to discuss it with their kids. I guess it's free therapy or what have you. 
but uh, I find it off-putting, I find it annoying. When I was in school we did not talk to our teachers about their sex life or their personal life or anything about their life and we didn't want to talk to them about that. We really weren't interested and they weren't interested in our sex lives, that's for damn sure. And when I, you know, talk about sex lives, I am a prude when it comes to underage sex. I don't believe in it. I think it should be against the law. I think people should go to juvie if they're found out that they had sex underage because it's not right. I mean, I was taught when I was a kid that you get married, then you have sex, then you have a family. You know, and then I learned maybe it doesn't have to be necessarily in that order, but they instilled in me moral values, despite their liberal stances. My parents instilled moral values. They told me this, I took it to heart. I don't like underage sex, but the other thing that really irritated me was this mother who wanted to change the sex of his of her son because he liked to wear dresses and I realized that that is going to be really bad for people it's going to be really bad if you say because you like to wear dresses or makeup that you should automatically become the opposite sex is going to cause nothing but trouble nothing but trouble and I disagree with it because for one thing maybe the kid doesn't want to go to school dressed as a girl and say I'm a girl maybe he just likes to wear dresses has it ever occurred to anybody that you don't have to go you know to extremes on all this there's plenty of people plenty of people that just like to dress in women's clothing they don't want to become women they don't want to be with men they just like to dress in women's clothing. Now, don't force them to say, well, if you like it, you better just be a woman full time. It's like, well, I'm not really comfortable with that. I like to do it as a hobby. I like to do it as a fetish. I like to do it as a sexual um, enhancement, let's just say. But to say just because you like to do this does not mean that you should automatically get a sex change. So that's going to cause a lot of problems down the line. You'll watch what happens. There's going to be psychotic kids. They're going to be out of their minds because just because they liked to wear a dress when they were five, suddenly the mother takes them and has their gonads removed, and then they go around there like uh, a movie, Sleepaway Camp. If you never saw it, I don't blame you. But it's about a transgendered kid that kills people all over the place. Now, let's go on to another thing about the TG phenomena. I never pay much attention to this, but this is MMA, martial, mixed martial arts champion Fallon Fox is a former Navy and martial arts expert that was once a male and is now a female. And if you look at this artist, she's not really trying to be dainty. She is a hulking mass of muscle, and she is going to beat the pulp out of genetic women, they used to call them. Um, she especially relishes beating up on genetic women that are against transgenders in sports. So she gets into that octagon with a girl that said, I don't think it's fair to have these per people that grew up as men and were in the Marines or the Navy or what have you in the ring with me. It just doesn't seem fair at the outset, no matter how much we've trained. And then she gets the pulp beaten out of her. And some get fractured skulls, but the worst part is the bellicose, gloating arrogance of this Fallon Fox she's such a great fighter she's a champion I'd like to see her get into the ring with a genetic male and see what happens then 
especially one that probably has a chip on his shoulder about the whole thing and maybe he's a transphobic and just can't wait to beat the living crap. But that wouldn't be right, would it? But she can beat another woman. She gets all arrogant and like all raising her arms up after a victory and then, you know, she's like Muhammad Ali if he was, you know, boxing women in the 60s. Really, I don't want to see her again, ever. And I noticed a couple of things on this MMA business. The uh, announcers were <clears throat> so on board with the wokeism, it was sick. Oh, these girls are going to really go at it today. Looking at one that's not even trying to look like a girl. Maybe it'll just be a guy out there saying he's a girl and start beating up on the other. Uh, these women are going to have a real knockdown drag out last 36 seconds. All right. Um, the audience, I noticed, was not cheering hugely when this bellicose, gloating, arrogant artist was raising her fists up in victory and saying how great she was. The, I didn't hear a whole lot of cheering. They didn't really get up on their feet. I don't think they politely clap, but I just don't see where the, uh, the general public is on board with all this. You can see how unfair it is. And I think that's part of the plan with all the impunicity, with all the utter hypocrisy and the utter madness that they just want to see how much they can do in people's faces and get away with it. So let's uh, talk about uh, self-defense. Is taking too long. Bodega guy is not going to be charged. I think the powers that be saw the writing on the wall on that issue. And concealing carriers are shooting uh, random shooters and shooting mass um, shooters before they get a chance to kill 10 or 15 people. They only kill three people because a guy with a concealed weapon took it out and shot the guy 30 seconds after he started opening fire. So that's a notch on one side's uh, belt, and I think it's obvious that if we're going to have a lawless society that there should be a few law-abiding people that carry guns. So we'll leave it at that. I can go into that later. So a Petri dish went to Saudi and got nothing done, absolutely nothing. I think if I was Peter Ducey, I would talk to... Uh, Jean-Pierre and say... How much gas did they use to go to Saudi Arabia via Israel and back to DC? How much gas did they use and how much did it cost? Just out of curiosity, just for the budget, just for the record. Because you probably spent tens of thousands of dollars to accomplish nothing and I think I could do the same thing for a lot less. So you say I'll give you $500 if you drive to Ogden, Utah and do nothing and accomplish nothing and drive back, I'd say, yeah, you got a deal. Because even at today's prices, I could still make a tidy little profit. And I wouldn't have to do anything. But I'm not Petri dish, so I'm not allowed to do things like that. So Dr. Jill uh, comes out of the woodwork, and after making a gaffe, which is so obvious, you know, don't say tacos and Hispanic in the same sentence. Just common sense. So she makes a gaffe, which I don't find that big a deal. There's many more sins to complain about. But uh, she's saying that Petri Dish, well, she doesn't call him Petri Dish. She says her husband, the president, would be making more progress on his agenda if he wasn't interrupted by all these pesky problems. Like skyrocketing gas prices, food prices, food, soon to be food shortages, the border being worse than ever, the Ukraine, United States, Russian war going into a long, drawn out, costly money pit for, for us, till we are a pit. Here's as long as it takes, so those are the things that have interrupted Petri Dish from doing his agenda. So, Dr. Jill, Doctorate of Education, um, had to clarify that. 
Eh, four months to the election. I'll just say this at the end. All the despots, all the tyrants, all the totalitarian oligarchs and autocrats have four months to make their move. And I would think that they're thinking about doing it in the next four months. Because if the goppers win, then who knows what may happen. They may take away their hero. They may take away their expeditious petri dish who's helping them to do everything that they could possibly want to do. So, in the next four months, the Dems are probably going to want to create a ruckus in order to obfuscate the election somehow. So, create a new pandemic, create anarchy, blow up Los Angeles, blow up Dallas, someplace, with an atom bomb, just to take people's mind off the election. Maybe the Dems will pull it off. So, the next four months, I predict uh, a catastrophe can't say when, but I say before the election. If they don't make their move before the election, then I guess they're not as bad as I thought they were, and they're not that smart, because that's what I do. So, welcome back to Diatribes. Today is, I believe, July the 20th. Is it July? Yeah, 2022. So we're just about, we're a little over halfway through the year, and haven't seen all the calamities I thought I'd see, but we'll see what happens. I think the next four to five months will be very, very interesting. So enjoy the rest of what's left of history. Ta-ta.